Hey everybody, welcome to episode 52 of the Metal Detecting Show podcast. My name is Kieran, and I have been metal detecting for nearly 30 years. This week I chat again to dig it with Will. Now why would I interview Will again so soon after our last chat? Well, for two reasons. Firstly, we did have some feedback from the last interview that we didn't go into enough detail about the Vanquish, which we did in this one, believe me. And secondly, as coincidence would have it, both Will and I started our journey in creating content for the Metal Detecting community within days of each other last year. So to mark this occasion, I thought it would be cool to circle back to Will so we could celebrate together. Hashtag anniversary episode. Also, just to give you a heads up, as it is our first year anniversary, make sure to listen to next week's episode for details on how to enter my monster giveaway, where I give away an Equinox 600 valued at 800 euro to one of my lucky subscribers. Anyways, on with Will and on with the show. Hey everyone, before we start, I want to thank you for listening to the podcast and I hope you enjoy the show this week. But before we begin, I want to give you the following information. If you want to give me feedback or interact with the show, please reach out to me on Twitter at Detecting The or Instagram at The Metal Detecting Podcast or if you want to pop me an email to Kieran at the Metal Detecting Show.com. And now, if you'd like to leave me a voicemail, please do so on speakpipe.com forward slash The Metal Detecting Show. The link will be in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so now through several avenues. Firstly, if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so at buymeacoffee.com forward slash metal detecting. If that's not your thing, you can support the podcast over on Patreon. Just search for the metal detecting show. And now, if you're looking to purchase any new equipment, I would appreciate it if you did so via kellycodedetectors.com using the affiliate link in the show notes. It will cost you nothing, but I will get a small percentage of your sale for sending you their way. This revenue gets reinvested into the show and goes some way towards keeping the show alive, covering hosting and equipment costs. And lastly, and most importantly, if you like this content, please don't hesitate to tell your friends and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So ladies and gentlemen, it's the return of the Mac. We've had him on five months ago. It's a... Dig it with Will. Welcome, Will. Hi, Kieran. How are you doing? Thanks for having me back. No worries. Did you think you would be uh, back so soon? Uh, not as quick as us, no. Uh, well, you know, we did discover that we have a mutual um, date coming up. Yeah, for me, yeah. For me, this episode is our, my 52nd episode, so that makes me one year making content for Metal Detecting Community, and you have something similar, don't you? Yeah, mine says on the 20th. Twenty uh, second was the creation of the Dig It With Will on Instagram. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's been it's been a crazy quick year. Like, yeah, it's been mad. All right, it's been um, yeah. a whirlwind rise, I suppose. You know, <laughs> it's it's been it's been unreal. Yeah, it's good. So the twenty second of March. Twenty so second of March. Yeah. yeah. So this will be going out tomorrow. Are you doing anything special for it yourself? Uh, no, I've not got anything planned. Um, mm. No, because I think I'm working that day, if I remember rightly. So we'll do some highlights. So, what were the highlights for you in the last year? Well, I've got a, I've got a couple. So, my big one is probably finding my Bronze Age Arrowhead, um, which I'm still waiting to hear back from Treasure Trove Unit about. That's funny. I have that as my last question. What's the latest on the Bronze Age Arrowhead? So it's still it's still with Treasure Trove, is it? Yeah, it's still there. The latest update on time frame is three years. Wow. Another three years or three years total? Three years total is the waiting okay. list now. How long is it in now? Uh, it's been there since August, so it has. Okay, so six um, months. Uh, yeah, so. Like, I'm oh, champing at the bat. Like, I just, I just want to either the for them to completely claim it or just yeah. send it back. <laughs> um, do, you, either or. do you think they'll claim it? I think they will, yeah. Um, do you think, it's, really? Yeah, because it's up here, in particular mm. in Scotland, um, during the Bronze Age, we were still using stone 
just because it was everywhere. Yeah, um, yeah. Bronze was expensive. It was hard to make, um, so they wouldn't waste it in something that they could make in two two minutes out of yeah. stone. So, so it's pretty it's pretty rare um, for Scotland. Um, but yeah, it's like I still can't believe I found it. <laughs> I actually watched that video a few times. So, just for the listeners, because they may not have watched the video, um, yep. do you want to just des- do you want to describe the arrowhead? Yeah, I know so... it's, pre- it's probably self-explanatory in what it is, but <laughs> I thought it was actually quite unusual when, when I saw it. Yeah, so basically, it's um, made from bronze or a copper alloy. It's not been like validated as being completely bronze, but it's a copper alloy. Um. It's tanned and it's barbed at the same time, um, so making it quite unusual. So describe what tanged and barbed is. So basically, it's got a tang. Um, so the tang is what goes through the shaft of the cool. that goes into the sh- attaches to the shaft, mm-hmm. and then barbed is basically so it makes more damage when you pull it out. Okay, or sticks in. Stays yeah, in there. so it stays in, um, and then obviously when the animal or person um, mm. is like thrashing about, it does more damage. So when it pulls yeah. out, it leaves, instead of leaving a puncture mark, it'll leave basically like a slash mark. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time, it's pretty nasty to be fair. It's rounded at the, the tip um, as well, which is probably more to do with uh, corrosion than anything else. But yeah, it's unusual. I showed, sent a picture of it straight away to my local archaeologist mm. and he was just that, like, he was com- completely like perplexed because it's tanged, it's barbed, it's made for bronze, and the band, the the tanged and the barbed is obviously so unusual, as well as it being bronze, because uh, it's quite a medieval shape, um, but it's not yeah. medieval. So it's has he indicated that it's definitely not medieval or that it's definitely bronze? He has indicated that. He is completely unsure um, and definitely one for treasure trove unit. Um, and it's basically what I'll go on a limb and say 98% of the comments and pictures and, like on Facebook have been going by. Um, and it's very similar to one of my teammates as well. He's got a tanged and barb, but he's, he's down south in England. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's very similar to that. It's not quite as big, but I think mine's is Normally, the finds that I pull off that field are quite corroded. They're quite worn. It gets a lot of chemicals dumped on it. Um, yeah, okay. So, I'm going off what I'm seeing other people finding. Uh, it's more, more so. But yeah, it's. I just can't wait to f- find out if it's uh, if if they want to keep it. So, and and what happens if they want to keep it? Uh, basically. I get a certificate, I get high resolution images, and then in theory, they'll send me, like a, it's basically like a finder's fee. Okay. And then it'll get put in a museum somewhere. I'm hoping that it comes back to Dumfries because it would look really nice in the Dumfries Museum mm-hmm. next to the, the bronze axe heads that have been found in the area and things like that. So, and I'm, I'm quite good. F- friends with the curator at the museum as well so i would really like it to be in his yeah. museum so uh, but yeah it's that's where it belongs really yeah that's exactly it needs to be sh- it needs to be shown off with with will dig it with will little back <laughs> underneath exactly his, yeah <laughs> stuck stuck into a stake or something a bit of meat yeah definitely <laughs> um you, you, you talked about the museum um you are doing an archaeology course yep tell us about that is that you going over to the dark side, or are we are we thinking? <laughs> no, like that? I don't. It's... I don't think like that. I think that's more of an augmentation of a skill. Yeah, basically, it's it's similar to like it's a open learning. So it's only a diploma, um, and it's basically if I find something that's historically important, and mm-hmm. so I can. Uh, basically dig it properly rather it's just like spade straight for it yeah. um, so like obviously like preserving everything and basically cataloging everything properly and things like that mm-hmm. um, obviously I already do catalogue 
finds properly anyway because I film it and nine mm-hmm. times out of ten you see the hole that it comes out of and um but yeah it's um it's basically a just in case and it was something else to do during lockdown. So Yeah. Is it one of the highlights starting that? Is it an eye opener sort of it's the last module that I did was a bit of bane in my life, um because I discovered how much I do not like ethno archaeology. It is like pulling teeth, basically. Right. Um there's just so much so much into it and like I basically just skimmed through it because I wasn't I didn't find any interest in it at all. And then the final question that was in the the assessment was basically like a six hundred word like essay about it. Oh my god. So I had to basically think yeah. on my feet and um do that. But I passed that one, so Oh good. Yeah, I've not done any more since. Um, I've took a wee break from it just now because I've been stupidly busy with work and at home yeah. and stuff like that. So, and everything to do with the chat, like dig it with Will, uh, network basically. And yeah, uh, it's busy times, especially when you're, when you're creating stuff and trying to hold a job as well. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's like I, I say to people, it's like having two type two full time jobs. It is. It really is. What other highlights have you had? Um, you've had a fair um, few silver. I've had no silver yet now in a long time. So have you not? Had, no, I, I'm searching. I'm searching on beaches, and uh, like I, anything, anything I get, I get like that says nothing. That means nothing. Like I had my first beach dig last year and pulled uh, a Victorian sixpence. Ah, so there's still hope. <laughs> <laughs> not in Irish beaches. We're tight. We, we don't, if we lose something, we'll dig up the whole beach to find it. That, that's because you've got short arms and deep pockets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> um, uh, my biggest highlight of the year, though, has been sponsored by Unearth uh, UK. Um, yeah, that's when I got that email. I was literally jumping for joy. So I was. Yeah. Yeah, I was chuffed for you, man. That's a lot of hard work went in there. That was I was buzzing as they say. Um, but yeah, what does that mean for you then going forward? Um, basically, going forward, that means I've got the support from from the shop um, through videos and things like that. Though, um, basically, advertise like I'm allowed to post on uh, their group, and uh, they also run a magazine and an e magazine uh, mm-hmm. called the Detectorist. Um, and it's got something like 15,000 subscribers to it. Oh. Graham, who owns Unearthed, is saying that Team Unearthed are getting a, a write-up in it uh, next, next for the next issue. So, um, yeah, it's it's crazy. Right. Yeah. Does that mean you'll get to go to any of their events and stuff like that? Or? Well, I don't know. Um, there's... Every possibility I could. It's just if I can make it there. Yeah. Um. I know they do organise quite a few. And yeah, but it's it's a really good shop. It's it was actually the the first people when I was approaching uh, people, um, uh, and companies about endorsement and sponsorship that I approached because unearthed, the owners of unearthed are detectorists. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. So. They're always there to give good advice. They're always there to answer questions. Yeah. And they always point you in the right direction. So, and the like Gav, I bought a few things off them and the service is unreal. Mm-hmm. Like you get it within like two, like between a day and two days. And where are they based uh, on? Uh, Barrow and Furnace in Cumbria. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pretend I know where that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically... If you were to go look at for Dublin and go straight, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of straight across. I'm thinking that might be a bit too low. <laughs> so it's it's it will it will be North England, let's just say. Yeah, it's not it's North England, yeah. So that's that's is that the biggest highlight? From from a professional sort of standpoint, I would think as in your professional aspirations in metal detecting, that would be the biggest. Yeah, definitely. Um okay. like that is um that has got to be the biggest mm-hmm. biggest deal for my channel. Um I don't think anything will really come close to it, really. Um because yeah. obviously it's my my first sponsorship, it's my work first endorsement. Um and 
I've got like they made me a cool sign for putting up when I do live streams. So I've got that for sitting behind me. Um, they sent me gloves <laughs> because they're scared of me cutting my hands. Well, I, I watched your latest video there today in catch up mode and Jesus, your hands were scratched. What were you doing? Yeah, that's it. That was a, a piece of glass. But yeah, it's just a, it's just a piece of glass. Okay. It's just a scratch. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> we're, all, we're all a bit soft in, in the end. So in relation to metal attacking though, the fines and stuff like that. So you have the arrowhead. I loved your um, bullhead silver. Oh, my, my shilling. Shilling, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that came out amazing. Um, yeah, it was it was pristine. It's, I still claim that that's my best silver I've ever found. Like mm. coin, anyway. Um, my best silver has got to be uh, my hawking muscle. I can't, still can't believe I found that either. <laughs> amazing as well. I, I, yeah. The day that came up, I was like, hawking whistle. And then at the end of your video, you think it might be silver. Did you confirm it was silver? It's silver. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's got ho- it's got hallmarks in it as well. Um, that's amazing. But they're, that's they're too scrubbed to actually uh, work out exactly where it was made and yeah. the age that it is and things like that. Um, it's heavily, heavily tarnished though. Like I've mm-hmm. been working on it and working on it and working on it, and I'm I don't want to do any more because I'll I'll get rid of most of the details that's on it I'll if I do it. any more to it. So. Uh, but it still works. It still mm. it still makes a tune. So it's uh, that's good. Yeah, it's uh, that was a cold day when I found that. So it was that was a very very cold day. I was <laughs> I was digging good. concrete. <laughs> yeah, that was the first. The top two three inches were rock solid. Yeah, uh, well, it's probably closer to four inches um, wow. that day because um, we had a cold snap that lasted. I think it was about two weeks. It was that. It was that good that mm. we could go to the locks and skate on the locks. Oh. Um, like if I wasn't working, I would have been out um with some of my hockey buddies um doing some outdoor training. Yeah, because that would that would be allowed. Um, but I was that busy with work over the, that period because nobody could get to the shops. Oh yeah. Um. So yeah, it's I missed out on that, but that's how that's how good the. The ice and the locks were at least six inches thick, so they were. So we we'll never see that in Ireland, do not So, um, <laughs> so what's the plan for the next year? What's the plan for the channel? Plan for metal detecting? Plan for Will? The plan for me, well, the plan for the channel is to keep it tracking ahead. Maybe pick up another couple of like manufacturer sponsors, maybe on the way. Like I'm quite interested in like Black Adder. Um, mm-hmm. I can't decide either my lab or my uh, Nocta. I've st- I'm still on the fence. Yeah, and that's purely because I want an amphibio. Because to me, an amphibio multi, I should say, they're the most underrated machines on the planet oh, that's available. Because nobody talks about them. Because all they're bothered about is whatever Garrett brings out in the Nox. And that's yeah, it. that's that's it right now. Yeah, or the simplex as the as the sort oh, yeah. of or the starter, simplex, yeah, the starter machine. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's got so much settings, and I like tinkering about with settings. It's got so much settings, so much scope that that's the main reason why I want it. And Grim Bleeper, who who's a YouTuber that I watch quite a lot, who's changed from an Amphibio to an Ox, he says that the Amphibio is probably the best machine out there. Wow. for like a general use. Not including like the CTX or the the big fancy machines, yeah, like yeah. the specialist machines. But then with Coiltech bringing out the new coils for the yeah. Nox, it's swaying me towards the Nox. I tried to sweet sweet talk Coiltech for a few coils to test out, but yeah. uh, no joy. They're they're literally sold out in the first run of coils already. So no joy there for me. For me, I don't even think on Earth's got any left. But yeah, like I know, like I know, if I went for a no- if I went for a Nox, I would want the fourteen by nine, hey coil yep. tech, just because I like that shape, a coil. I'm used to that general shape with with my Vanquish. I'm looking into doing some few like upgrades to my to my Vanquish uh, as well uh, this year. Um, I want to upgrade the coil to the twelve inch. I've already upgraded the battery. The battery pack, yeah. Yeah, so I've got the battery pack for it, um, which is crazy good. 
for the money mm. it is. Um, crazy good. Like I think I'm on my six hunt, and I've still I've only charged it once since I got oh, it. Much. Yeah, so it's that's that's very good. Yeah. Yeah, like and especially when the vanquish eats bat, it used to eat batteries. Like if mm. I was even out for like four hours, it was going through eight batteries. It's expensive as well. Oh, no, it's crazy. So last the last time we were on, I got some feedback to say that Will didn't talk enough about the Vanquish, right? <laughs> so I, I want a, a legit review now of the Vanquish off the top of your head, of course, because I haven't preempted you with this question at all. But yeah, that Just was not the, kidding. <laughs> the feedback I got last time was Will didn't talk enough about the 440. Right, okay. Right, so the 440, um, what can I say about it? It's a fantastic machine. It's reliable. Um, it is exactly what I said the last time. It's the poor man's Nox. Um, it's got four modes. So you've got coin mode, jewelry mode, and relic mode, and then custom. It nor custom because there's no point using it, in my opinion. So on coin mode, um, it is faster recovery speed. Um, but you lose obviously some depth with that. And relic mode is deeper and slower recovery speed. Jewelry mode is a band spanking in the middle of the two. And that's why I've started using that recently. In the last couple of digs, I've been moving on to that. Um, and it's perfect, basically. Perfect for pasture and beach. Struggles a bit on the on the ploughed, um, like I was struggling with it earlier on on the ploughed field, um, just like the Knox sometimes does as well. Um, just explain that it struggles on the ploughed. How how do you mean struggling? It's basically it's like the multi IQ can of handle the the voids and the ca- the spaces and the crevices and, and the and the structure of the soil. Mm-hmm. Um, like the Deus handles that perfectly, so does the Amphibio, but the Knox and the Vanquish, it's the multi IQs try to basically correct itself and it makes the signals not sound as nice, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So you don't dig no, as no, it much. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, this is completely my opinion <laughs> on, on it. Um, what else about the 440? It doesn't have the Bluetooth that the 540 has. For an extra £100, you can get the adventure back. That's actually more than that. Four nine nine, I think it is for the adventure pack, and you get two coils and you get Bluetooth headphones. I, I would say it's worth it. If not, mm. you can do what I did, and buy the Garrett MS three wireless kit for it. So you just plug it into the jack, and you use the Z Link, and obviously it's faster than Bluetooth as well. Mm. So there's like next to nothing in latency. Um, I think I looked into it, and it's something something like sixty nine of a millisecond okay, yeah. uh, latency on it so it's pretty good best, it's probably the best things I've ever bought for that machine so far but yeah you can, there's loads of different wee bits and pieces you can buy for the, the Vanquish as well so obviously I bought the aftermarket uh, battery pack um, you get up to 30 hours on a full charge you can buy one of them unearthed <laughs> shameless <laughs> plug <laughs> You can obviously buy you can buy an eight inch coil. The four forty comes comes with the ten inch coil, and you can buy the twelve inch coil. What's the community like with the Vanquish? Because this, this is my latest thing, right? You'd like the Knox has a big community. Simplex has a big community, and there's a lot of community augmentation and development that goes on with these with these two. You know, like so, like you just mentioned yeah. the third third party battery pack it needed that battery pack so somebody in the community obviously came up with a, an idea and it's yeah flourished from there with the knocks you've got the third party shafts now the simplex has those shafts as well um you know the carbon fiber shaft sorry yeah so it like what's the community like for the the vanquish there, there is stuff out there for the vanquish it's kind of piggybacked on to the the knocks because obviously to for mine lab to give this stuff give especially the vanquish as cheap as they are um because they are worth more there's obviously issues with different bits and pieces i've not heard any of the issue with the vanquished like with the knocks with the lug the lugs 
snap the off the, the coil. The sharp yeah. wobble, yeah. Um, but one of the issues is, and I still don't understand how people are doing this, is the back where the shaft connects to the control module cracks. Okay. So people have came up with a way to rectify that, and they've made the Vanquish into a straight detector conversion rather than the S-shape. So it's just a bracket that attaches to the cuff arm okay. at the bottom of the handle, and it just goes straight down. Okay. And apparently it doesn't. It helps with its uh, with balance and things like that. But it's like it's like thirty thirty quid or something like that for one of them. Mm-hmm. It might be more, but uh, you, I'm hoping someday eventually brings out a carbon kit for it. Mm-hmm. But it's an awkward shape. It's not just like a. It's just not. It's not circles. It's like a tetrahedron shape right, okay. at parts. Um. So I think that might be what the issue is. Yeah, it's a, it's more of a carbon fiber mold than a just a straight tube, you know. Yeah, because like when I was looking into it, like when I was actually looking into it for myself to see if I could actually find anything that shape and that size, I can go on the onto eBay right now and buy a, a carbon tube, or a couple of carbon tubes and a couple of cam cam locks, and I can change a knock onto it. Yeah, but I can't do that with a vanquish. Mm-hmm. I will say one thing about the battery pack. It adds a fair bit of weight to it, obviously, because it's it's got a big battery in it. Because it's right on top of the control box, because it just oh, goes yeah. where the batteries would go. Yeah. It just clips okay. in, so it's it does add a wee bit of weight to it, and you do feel it a wee bit more than the usual. Like I've I've injured my arm at work, so like it's just it's it's just it's just tennis elbow really. Um, it's just tendon there. Um, but you feel it after I think after what three hours today I was starting to feel it fatigue creeping in yeah but like i think with that i think i could probably put a counterbalance on the back of it um but i love how compact it goes it shrinks right down like i can almost fit it into my bag yeah but yeah i love i just it's i can't say enough like it's one of the machines that i recommend for people when they want to start up um i'll recommend the vanquish or simplex i've not used the simplex but from what I've seen and what I've mm. seen on YouTube from people that aren't to do with anything to do with all that, they they enjoy it and it works well for them. So yeah, I've, I've had a good bash with it now a few times and um, yeah, it's a good starter machine. I have to say it, it's simple yeah. and it's it's effective in its simplicity. If you know what I mean, yeah. you're literally listening for thumbs up, thumbs down type of a situation. Yeah. You know, it's very it's very clear what's good. It's very clear what not to dig. But actually, what amazed me about it is the iron discrimination is actually better on the simplex than it is on the. Uh, that doesn't surprise me though. Yeah, and I was just I couldn't get over that actually because I've hunted to the exact same bit of ground with both, and the knocks will be going off like Christmas tree nearly. And yeah, the, would you it, the, even the nulling out? It's very sure in what it's nulling out. If you know what I mean. Yeah. It's very concise. But back to the vanquish, is you talked before about the VDI, right? Does it suffer from this problem that the Knox has, which is my my pet peeve right now when I'm trying to research and get stuff together for the podcast? And I did the Simplex um, VDI discussion, and I've also talked previously about CTX VDI. Yeah. With most detectors, there's a very clear group of numbers that you dig, right? But every bit of advice you see about the Knox, it's, oh, you just have to dig everything. I always ask myself the question. What's the point of having all this discrimination, all this notching out ability, multi-frequency, if the advice is just dig everything? Does it suffer now, from that? That's the question I'm getting to. Yes. So you have to dig everything. Now, I've only recently started digging everything, though. Now, okay. I used to not, I used to dig everything above 12. Mm-hmm. But then I used to get off of my, you know, my mates who's been using the knocks for years, just dig anything what sounds down, didn't look at the screen. So... I was in my field that uh, I found the arrowhead in it, and this field produces ev- anything that you can think of, basically. Yeah. It's just one of those fields. And I was going along it, and I had this such nice sounding tone mm-hmm. that I'm not, I'm going to dig that. But then when I looked down at the screen, it was a free. Yeah, yeah. And I would never, in a month of Sundays, ever dig a free at all. Yeah. And, and then when I brought it, was the dragon button. Uh, oh, yeah. Badge, even yeah. There you go. So it it just shows you like it does. I was listening to that podcast the other day actually, and I'm just like, yeah, I dig everything now. Um, 
you know, maybe I'm just maybe and listen, maybe I'm a, a result of where I hunt. I like I hunt beaches that are on one of Europe's biggest harbors. So there's yeah. nothing but trash and rubbish washed up in and out there every day. And everything I find is is beach worn out or whatever you know so for me to have to take everything in that situation is not an ideal situation yeah so i've actually i've actually defaulted back to the ctx with the six inch coil you know this is what 10 year old detector now at this stage and it, it still you know, outperforms most machines though so yeah it's I know i'm not surprised why you went back to yeah. it i think the biggest issue with it uh with the Knox and the vanquish having that issue is because it's only minus seven to 20 whereas simplex in Nocturne, even Garrett as well. Um, mm. I'm pretty sure C Scope's the same. I'm pretty sure that's got to be in the six thousand. Um, I know the Quest machines are the same. They're all zero to ninety odd. Yeah. Just like you said when you were going on about the Simplex VDI, you've got obviously so much more scope. Yes, we've got more numbers to recommend, like to notice. But if you're going to truly work on VDI. Then I think it would be easier to do it with machines that go from zero, well, or minus, whatever, yeah, to ninety nine, mm-hmm. because you're more likely to know. Oh, well, that's that, that's that, that's that, that's that. Like you, you can see if you watch the like, other YouTubers on that have like the AT Max or an Amphibio, they know exactly what they're digging before they've dug it. Yeah, and it's because of the sound and because of the number that goes along with it. You don't see that as much with the Knox or, or the Vanquish. There's not actually obviously many Vanquish users um mm-hmm. like YouTube. So Yeah, definitely um it's the translation of the conductivity range to the, yeah. the actual VDI range. And you've you've hit the nail on the head there. The yeah. Vanquish range, the translation is you're getting a lot more conductivity points per point in the VDI of the Vanquish and the Knox, and that's causing problems, I would think. Yeah. That's that's what I think the issue is, and plus, obviously, everything's sized to American currency Quarters. as well. I was even laughing at, at the VDI bed testing you were doing. Yeah, and um, you put in the can of uh, Iron Brew. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if anybody noticed it, but the actual depth that it gave, it gave two two notches or two shovels, whatever yeah. it is. You know, for me, that's what four inches, but the hole was a good what six eight inches deep. Was it six inches deep? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, it straight away it made a larger target appear to be closer to the surface, which is the you know another problem that they would have. Yeah, with, like know. I was having that issue the day. Like I was getting, but again, it was on a ploughed field, so it's mm-hmm. got that void again. And same with the test bed. The test bed had that slight void in it as well. I was digging signals that were saying they were one or two inches deep, and they were closer to four to six. Yeah. Or they were right on the surface, but it wasn't actually telling me they were right on the surface. Because mm-hmm. on the Vanquished, if they're right on the surface, you'll get a higher tone anyway, and it'll tell you it's like the deepest point, but that combination it means it's on the surface. It's very similar to the, the Ace range. Like the Ace two fifty was the same. So hang on, just just let me get let me get my head around this, right? So it it'll give a high tone because it's on the surface. Yep. But it will the VDI will indicate that it, that it's deepest. The depth gauge will show that it's on its deepest. That's wow, that's amazing. I wonder what that's all about. Um I think it's the same on the Knox as well, actually. You know, I think I've seen that as well. Yeah. Um it was the same on the the Garrett. The Garrett was the same. Um like if it's shown that it was really, really, really mm-hmm. deep, it was normally on the surface. Like I always used I got into the habit of checking the surface before I checked for depth. Um that you'll see You'll see me on videos, I'll use my pointer and I'll test the surface. Yeah. Once I've like pinpointed it with my detector, like when I found that shilling, mm-hmm. I thought, well, it's, it's pretty close to the surface. I'll just see how deep it is, put my pointer down. Knew it was within three inches of that pointer. So I just dug, I didn't even use, need my spade. Yeah, nice and handy. It's amazing that it's just, you know, they try to build all these features in and, and ultimately at the end of the day, we just want something that's reliable and simple to to operate on. Um, So one last thing on the 440, the Vanquish, right? Yep. Your likes and your dislikes. So you already mentioned it doesn't have Bluetooth, but you can add Bluetooth. Yep. Um, My biggest issue with the whole Vanquish range is it's red. Yeah, it's unusual, um, isn't it? It's not like you're going yeah. to lose it in the field. Exactly, you're not going to lose it. Fair enough, it's mine lab red. I totally get it, but I hate it. 
Yeah. I can cover the control box and I'm contemplating getting an aftermarket cuff, but I'm not a big fan of red. See, when pe- you see people with the red telescopic shaft, then they've got the red lug yeah. supports, then they've got a red cuff. Nah, <laughs> it's not for me. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, much, yeah. I much prefer a black Ferrari as well. Oh, so, yeah, definitely. I think you've covered pretty much the vanquish. So any of our critics from the last time, I think we, I think we've, we've, we've dedicated a good twenty minutes there now, everybody, to the vanquish. No more about the vanquish. <laughs> yeah, no more about. Oh, the I will, say, I will actually say one more thing. Actually, one last thing, Steve Jobs. One last thing. When I was doing the test bed, test bed video mm-hmm. at six inches, it did not pick up that Roman coin. I noticed that as well. Very iffy under fifteen. Yep. Now, when I found that, I found that with my Garrett 250 at four inches, which is not very heard of, but it was on pasture, though. I think that's probably the biggest difference. I think, the obviously, when I say the void, that tiny, tiny little void where the coins were sitting, that was obviously playing effect to to it. But it's, uh, yeah, that's why it's so good on beach and on uh, pasture. Yeah, I, all I can say is I'm just glad when you were doing your testing, you didn't do an air test. You did an actual <laughs> proper test bed and put it in the ground. You, you could even see it when you were waving over without the clod. The numbers yeah. were totally different than what was oh, when, yeah. when the clod went on it. And the, and the numbers were more consistent, actually, when the clod was on it generally, you know. In, yeah. In the main. I was very, very consciously watching that. Yeah. I only made that video because I thought I wasn't allowed to go out detect them. Like, I read the rules wrong. Oh yeah, so the t- and I was out, out the next day. <laughs> well, I'm 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 still restricted to five kilometers, so that's why yeah. I'm bashing all these little beaches that are beside me, and I haven't hit the road yet. I mean, my plan for twenty one is is I'm also surrounded by farmland on the other side, so yeah. I just haven't bothered getting permissions really. But I am this year. I'm definitely I've I've already scoped out a load of farms that I need to get on. One of my friends has been quite good to me. Like he's gave me access to some of his permissions that are near me, because uh, he obviously he can't he can't get to them because uh, he's like ninety miles away. He's at Stranraer. How does a guy who lives ninety miles away get permission on a farm <laughs> that's ninety? I mean, I can't even I can't even get to a, a farm like a couple of kilometers of the road. He's I um I don't know how he does it. Like he is he, is he a chancer? Is he a good gift of the gab? He's he's fairly shy, so of course there's a bit of a chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, I think he's I think he's good at speaking to folk. Yeah, like we've got a couple of interesting projects lined up, mm-hmm. um, as well. But hopefully, will work. I've got one of my fr- one of my friends, um, who doesn't detect, but he's very good at making a website and things like that. Involved mm-hmm. as well. He's involved. It's I'm not making anything to try and take folk off of Facebook. Because I'm no bothered. It's just something so we can access it, so we can decide where we're going, um, yeah, and when we're going. Um, that's as much as I can tell you in that one. Oh, secrets! Ah, secrets! Secret, secrets! <laughs> secrets! 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 Well, yeah. So give all the shout outs there now. Basically, I want to give a big shout out to Unearthed, um, and a big thank you to Unearthed for, um giving me the chance to be a part of uh, Team On There. Hashtag Team On There UK. Um, so in Team On Earth, we've got uh, Scottish Relics. Um, we've got the Highland Detectorists. So we're the free Scottish contingent. And then down south, we've got Robert Collison, Collinson Hunter. We've got the Northern Detexpert, uh, David. And we've got Dale Scissors, which is Scissor Living Metal Detecting World Review as well. So that's 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 the six of us part of Team Unearthed. As it stands just now, I don't know if it'll grow or what. It might, it might not. Um, it might get smart, make it bigger. Who knows? Mm-hmm. I'm doing my part by doing what's needed of me. Giving my skills to them for whatever they need. And um, they've been very, very kind to me so far. So good. Yeah. And good on them. And that's it, Will. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>